What's up, everybody? In this clip, we're going to be talking about the shepherd sling. Stay tuned. As always, if you find these videos helpful or resourceful, I'd be honored to have you as a subscriber and will greatly appreciate it, my friend. Well, let's talk about the shepherd sling. This weapon goes way, way back. Uh, the most common reference to the shepherd sling is the story of David and Goliath in the Bible. Um, David took a, a sling such as this, put a smooth stone in it, sunk it into the giant's forehead. Pretty awesome story. Uh, this is a pretty amazing weapon, and if you've ever used one, or worked with one, you can see how that could easily happen. Uh, shepherds in the past would defend their flock with a shepherd's sling to drive off wild animals. Um, you know, ancient battles and Aztecs, everybody used this stuff. This is a very dangerous, very dangerous weapon. It's very dangerous to even practice with, but the shepherd's sling is a lot of fun. It's pretty inexpensive to purchase a shepherd's sling. I bought this one on Amazon for about 10 bucks and I got my money's worth day one. There's a lot of ways that you can get started in practicing with a shepherd sling. If you're able to set up a backdrop, um, just a place where you can maybe throw like racquetballs or something to start light, that's really the best way to get going. This is a dangerous, uh, a dangerous piece, and you need you need an open area to work with. Um, <laughs> you know, you really don't want to work with a sling in an environment like this, such as woods, because you, you're dealing with the problem of you know hitting a tree with the sling or uh, ricocheting off of a nearby tree. You want to work in an open field with a shepherd sling. Um, if you're going to sling with rocks, I started using rocks day one. Uh, river stones, you know, smoother shaped stones are going to be best for you. If you if you don't have a way to go gather river stones, you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy a bag of, of river stones, pond stones, uh, whatever you can find and start using that. How to's are very difficult with a shepherd sling. There's a lot of different ways that people use this. One of the things that I like to do the preferred method is to put uh, the loop on my middle finger and grip the knot with my index and thumb. Put the rock in, you put it nice and smooth, you keep it straight, and then from here is you're gonna have to determine which method uh, you like to use. Some people like to use the helicopter method, which is what I like to do. Some, <laughs> I hit my phone, some like to do I guess this is kind of an underhanded type of method where they release that way. And then others, I've seen others do like figure eight. For me, the most effective way has been helicopter. Finger in the loop, index thumb holding the knot, get the rock nice and straight, and then get your momentum. Be careful swinging around. Once you get your momentum, stay committed to it and you're connecting with your target and you're practicing. You're releasing the knot at the moment you want to let go. This is just going to require a lot of practice. What I recommend first and foremost is starting starting large, uh, large targets. Like I'm going to give you some examples here shortly of some of the different throws that I have made as of late. Start off using a big board, you know, that's, you know, three feet wide and, you know, as tall as a person. Um, and, and once you get pretty solid with hitting that on a regular basis, you can then start moving to smaller targets. It's just gonna be a matter of practice, my friend. When you're working with a shepherd sling, you really uh, wanna make sure the area is clear of people. This is, for me, my personal preference, this is not much of a spectator type of thing. When I'm working with a shepherd sling, I don't like to have anybody around me uh, because, I mean, rocks can fly out of the pouch. It's just very dangerous. The shepherd sling is, is dangerous I can't say it enough. You can clobber yourself with this thing if you're not careful. Uh, one time, I I was swinging around and I messed up and didn't commit, and I and I got bopped. You know, thankfully I wasn't in full swing yet, but bopped on the back of my shoulder with a rock. Um, and just a lot of factors uh, with the shepherd sling, um, and having people around is not a recommendation. Uh, you want some privacy and you want a lot of area to work with. Again, before I show the, the demonstrations of me using the shepherd sling, I just want to say that um, I really do believe this is a very instinctive learning process. You're just going to start connecting because what you're going to start seeing is, is when you're using your shepherd sling and you're, you're releasing and you're throwing, you're going to kind of start to see which direction the object is flying and you can tweak it. There have been times where I've had to kind of change my stance from, you know, turn here and throw from here 
there's just a lot of different things. You, you start learning different ways to make the, the object go where you want it. At this point, I just want to show you some examples of me using the shepherd sling. I want to encourage you to go out and buy one. You can get them on Amazon for 10 to 12 bucks and uh, you can get out and start slinging. This is so much fun. I just want to encourage you, be really careful. Uh, use some safety glasses. These aren't safety glasses, but use some safety glasses um, and just use caution and take care, my friend. I hope you enjoy these clips. Hope they inspire you to get out and get it done. Take care.